Okay, so um, I was supposed to have class this morning at 8 a.m. and I woke up at 5.30, 5.40, and then I received a message at about 6, 6.15 saying that classes were, um, or the school's opening time would be 10 a.m. because of inclement weather. I guess there's like some rainy ice sleet type thing. So I didn't have class this morning. I do have class in a couple of hours, but I took the opportunity this morning to extend my break and I probably should have been doing schoolwork, but you know, things happen. And I finished the psychopath test by John Ronson. Um, so I'm not going to call this a review. This is more of like a talk because I have, you know, low self-esteem and I don't really think that I can intelligently review a book, so I'm just going to talk about it and how I felt reading it, etc. Um, hopefully I remember everything that I was thinking. Maybe I should start taking notes while I read books. Maybe that would make this easier, but we'll see. Um, so this book was wild. John Ronson is so smart and witty, and his writing was so... It was just like super, super easy to read. It's basically like you're just having a conversation with someone, but not. I think it's because he's a journalist, so um, he really created like a great story. When I started reading this, I was expecting, or actually before I started reading it, um, I was expecting it to be kind of like a history of the madness industry because it says a journey through the madness industry, so I thought it, he was going to go through that. But it's more like his journey into how he got taken into the madness industry, if that makes sense. So it starts off with him. Um, he was like recruited by this woman whose name I don't remember. I think Deborah. Deborah. Um, and she received this book called Being or Nothingness, and it's super cryptic. And like her and a handful, not a handful probably like 20 or something, other people around the world received a copy of this book and there's like writing on every other page, there's words cut out and it's like this giant kind of puzzle and they're trying to find out who sent it and they can't crack the code or figure it out. So um, her, like one of her friends, I guess, suggests um, speaking to a journalist about it or some kind of investigative reporter because they might have a different insight. So they contact John Ronson. And so that's the first chapter, kind of, not really, but that's how it starts. And so from there, it just like whoosh spirals out of, not out of control, but it's just like insane. You're reading a chapter about something and then all of a sudden, halfway through, you realize that it's something else and you don't really realize the switch kind of, it's just super easy to go through. It was so good. I really, really recommend it. And um, there's only like a little part towards the end that I found like not disturbing, but really sad. Um, it starts talking about like child diagnoses of um, autism, ADD, and childhood bipolar disorder, which I guess had become um, more... Diagnosed more readily in the in recent past. I don't know how recent the past is because I can't I can't really tell. He mentioned some dates, but this book isn't a hundred percent chronological through his his journey. So um, there's a little bit of confusion about that. Like he mentions, you know, somewhere over here, like towards the end, about the first encounter with the lady or something like that. So that was a little confusing, like the timeline. But in general, I thought this was fantastic. The author. I like want to read everything by him all these tabs are like books that were mentioned where he got like source you know source information from or different um events or like psychologists that I want to look up and learn more about so that is kind of a problem because this book like exponentially increased my TBR I read one book and now I have to read I don't know how many <laughs> books but um yeah, so the author, he's great. He's very flawed. It's really funny because, like, he's discovering all the stuff about um, psychologists and, like, the DSM and stuff. And he is, like, diagnosing himself and saying he has anxiety and, like, trying to get a brain scan and all this stuff. He's hilarious and flawed. And it's it's really perfect. I really loved it. I gave it four out of five on Goodreads. Um, after last month or the month before I read Salt, Sugar, Fat and I gave that five stars after I first read it. I think I lowered it to a four star rating and if not I'm going to go do that right now. 
I don't know why I feel like weird giving a nonfiction book a five star. I feel like a five, this book was incredible though. I feel like a five star rating though is more like in my soul, if that makes sense. And I think that I might only be able to get that from fiction, at least so far. Although Helter Skelter, that one I think was five star. But anyways, I'm rambling. Um, this book was amazing. I really, really recommend it. Um, he's the author of Men Who Stare at Goats and some other things. I'm very curious because, um, yeah, I'm very curious about his other works. This was so good. Read it! I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye!